Hey everybody, it's Ashlar here with your third tutorial in Java programming with random numbers. We're going to be continuing right where we left off in the last tutorial. The code on the screen should be the same as what you have on your screen if you've been following along with me. What we're going to do, rather than writing new code from scratch in this tutorial, is just changing some of the parameters that are visible on the screen right now to make this program specific to rolling dice. Because when you roll dice in real life, you're essentially getting a random number between one and six. So remember I mentioned before that you could name your objects and your variables anything that you wanted as long as you declared what type they were. For example, numbers is a reference to a random number object. Counter is an integer variable. How many numbers is integer? Range is integer. And x in here is integer. But we could name these orange, anything that's an orange right here, can be the name of it can be changed. So what we're going to do is we're going to change some of the names to make it more specifically like we're programming dice. Now, as far as programming is concerned, these names really don't have any effect on how the code runs. It's just how you're thinking about what you're programming so that as you're going through writing your code, you know what you're referring to and what you're creating. So the first thing we're going to change is, and you're going to also see we're going to get a bunch of errors as we make these changes because when we change one thing, we have to change its reference. For example, numbers. When we change numbers up here, this numbers will no longer be valid because we didn't declare a reference that, uh, that was called numbers. So we're going to change this first to, instead of dice, we're actually going to be making two. Uh, we're going to make two dice, and the singular of dice is die, so I'm going to call this die one. I didn't mean to do it down here. This should still say numbers. And up here is where I was changing it. We're going to change numbers to die one. And we can keep everything else the same. So this really just illustrates that point that you could be naming these things anything that you want. We're still creating a reference to a random object. We just change the name of it. Now where it's referenced down here where it says numbers is where we want to change it to die one. We actually could have changed it earlier when I did that by mistake. But I just wanted to go in the in the demonstrating order. So right here you have uh, die one and die one down here. So now we're essentially setting x to the random number, but we're calling that object die one instead of numbers. All right, the next thing we're gonna we're gonna leave counter the same because the counter still is gonna be a counter. We need something to decide to be able to count on this loop. So we're gonna keep that as counter. Uh, the range is essentially what numbers are we choosing from. In this case, we're choosing from 1 and 10 after this incrementer. So what decides how many numbers you can choose from on a die is how many sides it has. So let's change range to sides instead. And same thing. Now we're going to need to change it down here. Where it said range, we're going to change to sides. So essentially what we've done now is we've just changed the names of things. We actually haven't changed any code yet. So the program should still run just like it did before. If I click run above, what this code does is it produces a list of it produces a list of 10 random numbers right there, you can see. So we're going to eventually change that as well. But I wanted to show you that all we're really doing right now is changing the names of things. How many numbers? This is basically how many random numbers we want to generate. Uh, in this case, we said 10. Let's call it rolls. We'll call it how many rolls because how many times do we want to roll this die? So we'll call it how many rolls. And then down here in the for loop, instead of how many numbers, we're going to change that to how many rolls. All right, so now we've got the same code running. We've got essentially, you can think, oh, we have to change sides to 6 because most regular dice have six sides. Now with RPGs and things like that, you have all kinds of you know, 20 sided die and all kinds of really cool things like that. And later on, if you want, we can make a program that has different sides in it. So essentially you could set this sides to anything that you want. I'm just gonna go with what a traditional die has, which is six sides. So essentially when you roll a die, you get a choice between one, two, three, four, five, or six. Now if we hit run, our code is gonna do that. So you see, you go down here, and it's like we rolled a die 10 times, and the first time it got a 2, 2, 4, 2. So now instead of just this list of numbers, which it still is, we can conceive of it as if we're rolling a die. And to further illustrate that, now let's be a little more descriptive in this print line here. Instead of just printing x, which is essentially the number that we got, let's actually say something. So before this x, I'm going to add a bunch of space here to really illustrate that we're still going to print out x. We still need to print out that random number. But let's say 
something about it. Let's say die one, because we're eventually going to have two. So we'll, we're going to name this die one, rolled A, and then a space and, an, and a quotation mark. Now, the space is just so, like, if we didn't put this space here, you would end up with no space between this letter A and then the number that we get. And then we also have to add a plus before this X. And that is not an addition plus. In this case, it means it's something called concatenation, which means that it's typing out die one rolled A and then printing out the value of X next to it. So that's what this plus means. It means type this and then also print out the value of X. So if I hit run again, now we're going to get a much more interesting list. See, isn't that super interesting? You get die one rolled a one, die one rolled a two. So now it's a lot more descriptive. We're not just looking at numbers, but we're conceiving of it as a die rolling. All right, that's all for this tutorial. Hope you learned a lot. Stay tuned for the next one. We're going to add just a little bit more to the program that you have on your screen right now and end up rolling two dice and see it output to the console. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like the video and leave me comments in the comments section below.